Good morning and welcome to this special service and happy Christmas to all of you from me and from all of the other stewards. Our Christmas Day service will be led by Marion, but before then we have our final Advent liturgy. <clears throat> Three candles have been lit along our Advent way. We remind ourselves that this year one candle remains unlit as the Christmas lights in Bethlehem remain unlit in memory of those killed in the current conflict in the Holy Land. And now our final candle reveals to all the world, God is with us, God is in us, Emmanuel. God is with us, God is in us. New life is celebrated this day. Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, Saviour, the baby in a manger, redeemer of the world, light and life and love for the world, Emmanuel. God is, is with us. us, God is in us. Jesus born for us, each and every one of us, not just for shepherds and for wise men, not just for those he knew then, <clears throat> oh yes, for them and us and evermore, Emmanuel. God is with us. God is in us. The extraordinary transforming the ordinary. The extraordinary <coughs> making sense of the ordinary. The extraordinary giving purpose and meaning. The extraordinary making me and making you. Emmanuel. God is with us. God is in us. Christmas God, you have on you <laughs> Christmas God, you have led us through Advent and brought us to the dawning of this Christmas day. You have transformed us and remade us, changed us, repurposed us, enlightened and envisioned us. Our ordinary selves made new in you. We marvel, overwhelmed and speechless at the gift of a child who transformed the world, who offered and offers such love, such joy, such goodness, such purpose and such life. Christmas God, we can't now or ever thank you enough for all you have been, all you are, all you will be, transforming your people, making all things new, redeeming and blessing each one of us. Amen. Amen. Happy Christmas. Thank you very much, Malcolm and Linda, for lighting the candles and leading us through the liturgy. Alec is going to bob up at some point and take a photograph of that, so um, we can send it in as we're asked to send in um, the, the only partially lit Advent ring as part of our support for the whole situation. Is there anybody in this room to whom you have not yet said Happy Christmas? If there is a, is, please say it now and don't forget Alan in the corner. Anybody who was here yesterday, you got a practice run at the hymns because most of them are the same because they just felt to be the right ones to sing today. So maybe next year I'll get better at picking different hymns on Christmas Day to Christmas Eve. But we are going to start with Come and Join the Celebration. It's 196 if you're using the hymn book. Thank you, Alan. <laughs>
So first things first, has anybody had a present yet today? Put your hand up if you've had a present. Keep your hand up if you want to tell everybody about it. <laughs> right. If I take this without breaking it, do I need to press a button? No, it's on. Okay. Uh, Bob's, <laughs> bought, Bob's bought me a wonderful book by Judy Dench, all about a life with Shakespeare. Ooh, and yes. the best bit, a big box of Turkish delight. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a fan of Turkish Delight? <laughs> That's not nice. Sorry. <laughs> the, the, the answer is, oh, that's nice. She can eat it so I don't have to. Anyone else? Thank you. A pair of religious socks. What is on your pair of religious socks? Well, I've got them oh, on. Because oh, you haven't. Oh, yes. <laughs> They are like the Technicolor dream coat. Oh, right, all okay. All sort of colours. And there is a religious text to go with them. Is it actually on the socks? No, it's with a cardboard surrounding them. Okay, right. There's quite a sermon in there, actually. <laughs> okay, we look forward to that one. Yeah, we'll Tell me when you do it and I'll watch it online. Right. <laughs> Anyone else? Christmas socks. Christmas socks that Bob's wearing. Got a new dress. Is it it's the one red. you're wearing? Yes. It's a very, very nice, very nice, very red. Give us a twirl, Judith. Come on, give us a twirl. Do you really? Apparently not. <laughs> Father-in-law has no power whatsoever. It's a lovely dress. Enjoy wearing it. Anyone else? I got some Lego. Ooh, what Lego did you get? Um, succulents. Lego succulents. Yep. I okay. can't keep real flowers alive, so Lego ones are perfect. I mean, succulents don't take much water anyway, well, no, but the Lego true. ones even I less. <laughs> Tim's looking very puzzled. Sorry? Lego? Succulents. Oh, yeah, uh, yes. They're the more fleshy kind of cactus without the spike. Well, they have different spikes. Let's not get into the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't eat them. No. Well, I'll, probably wouldn't do you any good if you did eat them. This service is going to get quite long if we get into a conversation about succulents. Anybody else? No? Jacob and Laura do not want to tell us what they've got. Is it a self-warming coat? <laughs> Have you had good presents that you're happy with? That's all we need to know. Anyone else? You haven't opened them? Great. Alan, what have you got for Christmas? You haven't opened it yet. You don't know? Nothing. I don't believe you've got nothing for Christmas. I know your family. They're generous. We've got a present. And it's not a pass the parcel, but it is lots of layers. So we're going to go through the layers. And I was said to Joe, Joe is our honorary child who will get involved and do things, which means I don't land on those of you who might be considered children who don't want to get involved. But if anyone else here wants to get involved, we have layer after layer after layer going through the story, so you'll get your opportunity. But what it says on the tag is, Happy Christmas. Open carefully, one layer at a time. Each layer has something to do with Christmas. A question for us to answer, that's us as a congregation, a sweet to keep if you want, and a sweet to share, which kind of fits into yesterday's Chris Dingle message, doesn't it? <coughs> Enjoy. So, would somebody like to unwrap the first layer? It doesn't have to be Joe. Jacob, do you want to come and do it? You can do one later. Do it with Jacob first. <laughs> One, yes. Most of them are a different colour altern alternating, but do be careful with colour. I think it's the same wrapping paper underneath as well. So You can sit down if you want. You can... Oh, you've just been really careful. That's fine. I think that's the next 
Yeah, that's right. That's the next layer. <laughs> so all the contents are in this bit, apart from that. If you want to read the question, into the microphone, yeah. Can we remember all the times and places where angels appear in the Christmas story? Okay. Those are your sweets. One to give away, one to keep. You can have the question if you want, but I don't think you want. And what's the object? I don't know. It's an angel. It is an angel. It is an angel. I I, I, yeah. Have you done gravity yet in science? Yeah. Thank you, Jacob. Do you want to go sit down? So, can you remember all the times and places where angels appear in the Christmas story? Oh, yeah, if you're, yeah, one was to share and one to keep, yeah. Yes. But we don't, we don't dictate how he shares it. You might get one at some point, Andrew. Of course, if you unwrap, you will get one, won't you? So, can you remember all the angels in the Christmas story? Hands up, anyone? Go on, Ellie. Yeah. I think that's. Go on, Elizabeth. Ze Zechariah, not Elizabeth. I don't think Elizabeth sees an angel. I think it's Zechariah in the sin in the temple, isn't it? No, don't be sorry. <laughs> Feel free to find a Bible, check it, and tell me I'm wrong, because I quite well could be wrong. But yes, so I think you've got them all. So we've got Mary, we've got Joseph, we've got the shepherds, the wise men when they're told or not to go back to Herod, and Zechariah in the temple right at the beginning when he's told about he's going to have a baby, John the Baptist. I think that's all of them. So I've got another question. What message did the angels bring? I know it was different to each of them, but generally, how would you cast it? Was it good news or bad news? Good news, good news right, which leads us into prayers and prayers of praise as we th say thanks for the good news. Let us pray. Awesome God, in the beginning you were, in this moment you are. You are strength and weakness. You are light and glory. You are God, and you welcome us and listen for our prayers. We thank and praise you for the good news of God with us. God in a manger, God of surprises, help us this morning and today to unwrap your present to us this Christmas. Show us how to celebrate simply with justice, with mercy, and with holy joy. Amen. Who wants to unwrap the next layer? Yes, Joe, please do. <laughs> I don't think that we've got to that one yet. He's got a blue head. So who do you think these might be, if you can tell from there? Somebody, somebody can you say what you said louder? Thank you. So what's the question? Do you want to read it into the microphone? I'll take that off you. Thinking of your family and friends, is there anybody that you are upset with? and could do something to put things right today or very soon? I'll let you answer that in your heads. We're not going to have a discussion about that right now. The Bible tells us when Joseph heard that Mary was pregnant and he knew that he wasn't the dad he was planning to quietly separate from her. We can only imagine how betrayed he must have felt. Until that is, he heard from the angel in a dream that this was God's plan, that this was God's special child and that he should stick with Mary. 
I wonder what those conversations were like between Joseph and Mary. The relief that they would still be together, the strength that Mary saw that she would get from Joseph being her support through all that was to come. God gives us the people around to share love and care. And we can fall out over the daftest things, especially at Christmas when we're tired, or over things that are far more serious. As we see Joseph returning to Mary, perhaps we can take some inspiration to make the first step to put things right with anyone we might have fallen out with or upset recently. As I say, I'm not going to get you to tell me who you're upset with at the moment, but we have another prayer. Let us pray, a prayer of confession. It's just to take a moment to pause before God and think about anything in our lives right now which we could do with rethinking and saying sorry for. We are sorry, God. We thank you that you hear us and that through Jesus you make things right. Help us to seek your peace and your healing power for our relationships and to let your light and love shine brightly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't usually pick the next hymn on Christmas morning, but it felt right to do so this year. And so we're going to sing O Little Town of Bethlehem. It's 213 if you're using the hymn book.
Nelly seemed really eager at the beginning, so. <laughs> No, it's not the last one. No, no, no keep. No, that's fine. That is the right thing. It is not the last one. There is more stuff inside. It's just inside that because it's smaller. <laughs> right. I think you might. Oh, she's got three sweets. Want to read the question? You can answer the question while you read it as well after you've read it. Um. Where were you born? Yeah, so where were you born? I was born in a little town called Diaso in Ghana. Yeah. Thank you. Were you born in the same town, Rebecca? Or were you born in a different town? A different town but in Ghana. Yeah? We've got, it's the stable. It's the stable from this nativity scene, which is really one that's for toddlers. But I thought you'd appreciate it as well. <laughs> You don't often use the stable, but I thought, actually, thinking about where we were born. So, I'm not going to go around the congregation to see where you were born, but anybody here, other than Rebecca and Nelly, who was not born in the UK? That's a surprise. <laughs> were you born in South Africa? I'm sorry? Kimberley. Kimberley, yeah? Same town? No? Rosettaville. Have I said that? Am I hearing correctly? Yes. Thank you. It's my ears, not my mouth, that I'm worried about. <laughs> so, so the older Brankens, who aren't that old at all, but they were, they were, <laughs> they're younger than I am, so they're definitely not that old, they were born in South Africa. The younger Brankens were born in the UK, yeah? Now, where were you? Were you born in Clackheaton, in this area, or were you born... Dewsbury, Laura? Dewsbury as well? As I say, I'm not going around the whole congregation. So anybody not born in West Yorkshire? <laughs> Mainly that side. Because <laughs> I was born in West Yorkshire. I was born in Otley, so I was born in West Yorkshire. I'm back in the county of my birth. Um, so anyone not born in Yorkshire? Keith, where were you born? Cleethorpes. Cleethorpes. Malcolm? London. London. Pam? Louth in Lincolnshire. Louth in Lincolnshire. And Andrew? Derby. Derby. And have I missed anyone who wasn't born in Yorkshire? Rugby. Rug Rugby. It's not that I'm not interested in where the rest of you were born. It's just we do have to get on with the service. <laughs> The Bible tells us that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. We have just sung in that hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem, about peace for all the earth. And yet we know that the people of Bethlehem are not shining their lights or playing music as they usually do this year because of the lack of peace so close to the place where Jesus was born. There is a, um, a video online of the Methodist... Uh, I can't remember what the phrase is, but let's say chaplain, it's not the right title, to Jerusalem, who is actually in the UK because he came home after the attacks, the Hamas attacks in October. But there is a video message that he has done for Christmas, which I nearly played to you, but it is quite long. But he shows what it was like last year in Bethlehem with the marching bands and all the celebrations. There is none of that this year, and we know why there is none of that this year. The Christmas story is not just about... 2,000 years ago, it is about today, and we still connect with those places where there is not peace on earth, which is most of the world. Let's take another moment to pray. We pray for peace, for peace in Gaza and throughout the Middle East. We pray for peace in Ukraine and in so many other places around the world where there is conflict at this time. Living God, as you did something new through Jesus, so may your hope and your promise bring a new way of thinking and understanding and hope for reconciliation and for a just and merciful peace around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Another layer.
I've lost it. It's there. It's because it's changed shape so much. Anybody like to open this present? And that, go on then, Judith. Just come and get it. There are several more layers. No, I think there'll be two more after this. I'll give you a clue. Linda is going to bring us the answer to this question. Yeah, she doesn't know it. It's in the Bible reading. Is the answer. <laughs> it's a manger and a baby. Does the Bible story really say that Jesus was laid in a manger? It's a very odd bit of the story, isn't it? Come on, Linda, come and tell us the first part of the story. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Linda will be back shortly with the next part of the story. There are bits of our story which tradition has added to that story of Christmas as it's been told throughout the years. So the idea of a donkey, that's the classic one we keep saying. There's not a donkey in the Bible. There may well have been a donkey the first Christmas. It's logical that there may well have been. But it doesn't say that. It only gives us actually quite a few details, quite a a reduced number of details. I just realised that quite a few can mean quite a lot, can't it, if in some <laughs> circumstances. But it only gives us a sparse details, really. So we know when. It was during uh, the time when Quirinius was governor. Well, there were two of those times. It was when there was a, a census. Well, that happened both times that Quirinius was governor. But they work out when it is. But we are told that Jesus was laid in a manger. We're told that Jesus was wrapped in cloths and laid in a manger. So that's important because they bother to tell us. So that is important. Why do you think it might be important? And I don't really know the answer to this. I can guess at it. So I really am interested in your answers. I can give you one answer while you're thinking, which we will see when Linda reads the next part of the passage, which is that this is the sign you get to the shepherds, they are told to look for a baby who's wrapped in cloths and laid in a manger. So that's a sign that they've got the right baby. But I think there's perhaps something more to it. Any thoughts? Or shall I just tell you what I think? A lowly birth. A birth that's almost more lowly than lowly because this is someone who didn't even have a proper cradle to be laid in. He was homeless at his birth. And so there's a connection can be made between anybody who is without and Jesus. And the other thing I would suggest is that this is a place where animals fed. Jesus was born for all of creation, not just for people, but for the whole world and all of creation. So you can keep thinking about it. Why a manger? Before we have the next part of the reading, we've got one more layer to unwrap. Well, it's not the last one, but there's one more after that. Anybody want to unwrap a layer? 
It's not that scary, you know. Thank you, Malcolm. It's not like the chocolates are poisoned or anything like that, you know. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that is the last one. What have we got? What's what's the thing? Yeah. So sheep. A sheep. And a shepherd. And a shepherd. Yes. Exactly. And what's that's it? And what's the question? Right. Question is. What do shepherds know? <laughs> <laughs> this is partly a reaction to somebody saying, shepherds were ignorant, and I think, oh, yeah. So, what do shepherds know? What, how to look after sheep, which is very important for their job. Anything else do you think they might know? How to fend off wolves. They have to be quite brave, shepherds, in those times. So, someone else said something. All about the weather, yes. Anything else? Sorry? How to navigate, yes. See where they're going. Where all the good grass was? <laughs> this is easier than why was Jesus laid in a manger, wasn't it? isn't it? Really? <laughs> I was waiting for someone to say, shepherds know how to count. Because of course they count sheep. <laughs> sheep, sheep. Shepherds know how to say sheep as well. Uh, we are going to hear now what the shepherds discovered. Thank you, Linda. So, in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Thank you, Linda, and I like your earrings. I'm sure the shepherds did know how to count, but they didn't manage to count all the angels, or at least they didn't tell us how many there were. Possibly there were more angels than could be counted because it says there was a whole company, a heavenly host. This was something really important happening. But these shepherds knew how to follow instructions, how to spot the right baby because they listened. And they knew that they would find him wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. They knew that Jesus was a special child so much so that after they had seen him, 
they just couldn't stop telling people about him. And so the shepherds are the first evangelists. This was too good a story to keep to themselves. And that's what we still say, isn't it? It's too good a story to keep to ourselves. So we're going to sing before we open our last layer. So think about it. Sit there and think about whether you want to be the one to open the last thing. Because what on earth could it be now? Because we haven't got to the wise men yet. And they're not on Christmas Day. So what could it be? We are going to sing See Amid the Winter Snow. It's 215 if you're using the hymn book.
wants to do the last one? Go on, Linda, thank you. Um, now have the thing first, please. Have you worked out what the thing is? Well, I wonder, but I'm not sure now if it might be a star. No, it's not. There used to be a star with this set, but my colleague lost it for me. Sorry, that's, an, that's another story. She used to do pass the parcel every year, and we lost the star. So it's a but, small black plastic box. Mm. <laughs> if you open it, you'll see what it is. Yes, I was pulling in the suspense. I guess I can't do that, so. <laughs> Prolonging the suspense even more. Right. 10.45, it's 10.45, yes, we need to speed up. Your, your dinner will be ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's very time. We could try it anyway. <laughs> it's, a, it's a travel clock, which is a bit dusty, to be honest. But um, right. It's a travel <laughs> clock. So the question is, you've got, have you got the question? No, that's your picture. No, I've got my picture. Oh, oh, interesting. I guess we don't want everybody's full answer to no. this, but... Who are you going to spend time with today? So, Linda, who are you going to spend time with today? Well, interestingly, with Eric, my husband, for those of you that don't know him, um, and we're going to have Christmas lunch just with two friends, so just four adults at their home in North Yorkshire. OK? Good. OK. Yeah, I'm not going to ask you all who you're going to spend time with today. I hope you're going to spend some time with somebody today. And you spend time with each other. We have spent time with each other. When we can, one of the best ways to show someone that we love them is perhaps to spend time with them. It's a good way to get to know people better, to share what is important, and to just be with people when they need company and comfort. And I don't know about you, but I think there is something particularly special about doing nothing, or at least nothing really important with those that we love. These are the people that we are willing to and even like to waste time with. God created time. God is eternal, outside, beyond time. In Jesus, God stepped into creation and chose to spend time with us. We can read all about it in the Bible, but more than that, through the Holy Spirit, God continues to be with us, to spend time with us, and to travel with us through the lives that we have been given. And part of that traveling is that God listens to our prayers, however short or long they may be. We have had several short prayers going through the service, but now I'm going to invite you to pray for the people who are on your hearts the people that you particularly want to bring to God's attention in this time. And I've got some post-its, some star-shaped post-its. I'm going to give them out. I've got some pens if you want them. Just write down people's names, situations. It will be fairly confidential, although I'm going to invite you to come and stick them up on the communion rail later so someone else might see what you've written. But I will just gather them up at the end and take them home and they will be dealt with safely. And we'll have a short prayer to God. So you know what you're doing? You just haven't got the tools to do it with quite yet. <coughs> Would you like a pen, Alan? You don't have one. I'll give you the stars. Right, I'm going to give a chunk to the end of each row. Yeah, yeah, if you want to come and help, Alec, that's grand. Okay, I'm going to take some and pass them on. How many, how many prayers you want to pray between the, your row? I'm obviously thinking you're a very prayerful row there. Do you need more than that? Are you is that okay? Do you want another one? Or are you? No. now decided you look like a pink family John? 
Anybody need a pen? You know these people who don't have pens on Christmas morning? Can you pass them in front of you as well, please? And it's always the same rule as ever. If you find a pen that doesn't work, let me have it so I can throw it away. Can you take one to Marcia? Or to the back? You all right? <coughs> Biggest decision you're making today, which colour pen to use. Yeah, I'm sorry, you need something to lean on and we don't have hymn books. <laughs> when you've all seemed to have written, I will say a short prayer to hold them all before <laughs> God and then I will invite you, I'll be singing our last hymn, to come and stick them on the communion rail or if you don't want to do that then you can do it at the end of the service as you leave or you can pass them to me and I will put them there <coughs> for anything anyone and all we need to do is write a name or a situation and God understands I know a couple of people are still writing, but as you write, I am going to say a short prayer and then lead us into the Lord's Prayer. God, you know the thoughts that are on our hearts and in our minds. You know those people for whom we have most concern at this time, <clears throat> those situations where we see there seems to be no answer, and we lay them before you. And trust that your will may be done and your love and your healing power may be known. We offer our prayers to you and trust in your love and your mercy to answer them. And as we pray, we share together in the prayer that Jesus taught his friends and his followers, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining in with all the unwrapping. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. We are going to sing our final hymn, which is O Come All Ye Faithful, with the last verse. But we're missing out the wise men, otherwise we really won't have breath to talk with anybody else for the rest of the day. So it's 212 if you're using the hymn book, O Come All Ye Faithful. And if you want to come up and... Bring your prayers up during that time. Maybe gather them from your row and, and stick them on the communion rail. You'll be very welcome, or you can do it at the end as feels best. I'll stop talking and let you play, Alan. Thank you.
So, some words of blessing. May the song of the angels, the joy of the shepherds, the wonder of the wise men, and the peace of the newborn king fill our hearts and homes this Christmas time and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and praise the Lord while you're enjoying Christmas.